Hi there, my name is Mary Charlson from 5minutemarketing.com and welcome to Marketing and Media Trends for 2024. I'm going to be looking at the five big trends that we should have on our radar for this year, looking at not only why they're happening, but also how you should take advantage of that uh, and what kind of actions you should take. I'm going to be framing those from the perspective of a business in the travel industry, just you know, so we can sort of see it as an example, because I deal with a lot of clients in that area. But you'll easily see why and how these can be applied to any industry. So let's get started. We'll get over here and uh, the future is loading, so to speak. So as I said, I'm going to be looking at the five big marketing and media trends for 2024. Let's just bang off what they are first, and then we'll dive deep. So we'll look at why the source, okay, why the source of media will matter in 2024, and how to put yourself at the center of it. <clears throat> we'll learn the two distinct ways that social media is changing, and how that's going to impact your social media strategy. Find out why print, yes, ink on paper, will make a comeback in 2024, and how to leverage that in your digital strategy. We'll look at why the way that we used AI in 2023 is going to change from the way that we're going to use it in 2024, and why that matters to your strategy, and help you understand the paradigm shift about to take place in search and what that means for your business. <clears throat> so the first off is the media source will matter. Um, 20, 2024, the source of the information and the actual storyteller delivering it are going to be something we're going to be focused on. Um, in fact, the source might actually be more important than the story. And you might ask why? Well, it's because trusting the information and the source will be one of the only barriers uh, to help distinguish what is truthful content and what is not. It's all about truth and trust. Um, in an area when AI will enable the generation and distribution of bias and outright fake content through the written word, audio and video, having trust in the media source will matter. Uh, we're likely to see an AI-generated video or audio recording later revealed as manufactured, which will have political ramifications in 2024. We could also see a fictional creator, you know, perhaps an artist, a band, or a musician, uh, where the music photos and persona uh, are AI-generated, and they'll rise to fame and, you know, uh, we'll, we'll think it's great, um, you know, before the origin story is revealed. And that will sort of set about this whole, trigger this whole thing around truth and trust. Um, AI is also about to, you know, to enable a, a huge deluge of uh, content, unoriginal content, um, easily generated. Um, and with each successive exposure to content that could be manufactured and churned out like a puppy mill, we'll increasingly look to the media sources that we can trust uh, to remove that uncertainty. Um, we'll crave the first-person narrative from the real human content. Um, the favored sources will be people, uh, you know, people who've earned our trust through thought leadership, uh, experience, and research. And this will be an environment where referral networks um, are also just as important as SEO results, uh, since social proof will matter a lot. Uh, building trust will also gain you access to direct first person data, first uh, party data, which will become increasingly important as third party data is withheld uh, under security regulations. Real human content, first person narrative. So we're going to crave that first person narrative from, from real people. Uh, the favorite sources will be the people who have earned our trust, as I said, through thought leadership, experience and research. Um, AI is going to enable a lot of travel advisors to produce a lot of content, for example. Uh, it, you know, and uh, while well, assistance may be a good thing for an outline, uh, you'll want your content to feel 100% human generated and coming from you. Um, be sure to add personality, you know, and share stories only you could tell, uh, then tie it back to your brand and your offering. Um, you know, 
for if we're taking a look at travel advisors as an example, we might have a persona for who our ideal target is. It might be like Disney Donna or you know Luxury Laura or Curated Kate, uh, Cultured Kate, I should say. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, instead of writing, you know, for just for a persona, we want to write to that person, right? So Donna, right? Disney Donna, you know, be a little cheeky, pretend, you know, it's, it's almost like you're having conversation with, with a mom, you know, swapping stories and around family holidays, you know, and make your, your brand, the hero of that story. You know, that's the way you're going to achieve real human content and connection in 2024. Yeah, referral networks, right, are going to be almost as important as SEO. Um, yeah, you may have different objectives at various stages of the content funnel and the buyer journey. Um, you know, that, that referral network uh, is all about harnessing the repeat customer and loyal customer uh, being your brand advocate. Um, the an example that I've I've used is, you know, Facebook groups. Um, and we'll take a look at that in a moment. Um and, you know, those are ways, you know, coming, those are ways that you can, um, you know, get the loyalty in the groups uh, and you get that loyalty loop happening with others uh, already in the group who are saying positive things on behalf of your brand. So why is this happening? Why is this media source um, trend so important? Um, AI as a tool promises great speed and efficiency for many marketing tasks, including writing, but there's no stopping, you know, the growth of it in 2024. And that's all good. Um, but it also has the potential um, for some sort of, you know, as I said, the deluge of content um, and potential kind of um, uh, poor creative applications. So what does it mean for you? Um, developing thought leadership, original content, um, you know, and platforms to share it will be, you know, critical in 2024. Um, you know, platforms where you can make a real personal connection uh, through video, um, maybe in-person events, um, and through the written word, um, you know, delivered one-to-one, -one, you know, through newsletters. Um, you know, those things are the, the ones that hold the most promise in solidifying that thought leadership. You know, for a travel advisor, it could be tied to your thought leadership in a particular area, right, around a particular region of travel or a particular type of um, target audience um, where you have your niche. Um, everything that you can do to kind of reinforce that will be important in 2024. And I put a little emphasis here on your owned media, that stuff that you control, like your website, your e-newsletter. That's where you can really get that authoritative content. Um, and also it's where you can, um, you can get the uh, access, you can, um, you, know, you can get signups uh, where you can get that first party data, make that one-to-one make that -one connection, um, you know, capture that personal contact information, um, more so than say on rented land, which is social media. Um, you know, the notion of owning the contact and becoming uh, will become even more important in 2024 with more and more restrictions, as we said, on third party data sharing. We can sort of see that owned media in the whole digital marketing mix here. Um, you know, creating content which shares personal experiences and insight will set you apart from that AI generated kind of listicle kind of stuff. You know, smaller local groups and meetups for fun education, you know, targeting, um, you know, uh, those who are sort of desperate for that human connection in a post-pandemic world. That's another great way to leverage uh, your thought leadership as a trusted media source. Um, using content creators as influencers um, that can surface content in this environment will also continue to be a growth area in 2024. Um, they're real people with a network of human connection. Um you know, utilizing them, you know, well-known, respected in your niche could help you tap this trend around media being, you know, source being so important. Um, the strength of influencers, you know, is is gaining um, even more ground in 2024. <clears throat> um, it's not something commonly used by travel agents, but I think there is huge potential here. Um, you know, in 2024, there's going to be a little bit less emphasis on reach uh, and more about that personal connection and trust, which makes working potentially with nano influencers, you know, those with you know, a couple thousand followers, uh, but highly engaged, uh, that might make that very, very appealing. 
um, you know, for travel advisors, you know, maybe you have a customer who would work with you, you know, somebody um, who's got a lot of engagement, right? A nano influencer, maybe not, not so much for cash. Maybe they work for travel discounts as an example. But I also think that in 2024, whether you're using influencer generating your own content, the game will be less about reach and more about attention and connection. Um, follower counts and list size will uh, matter less than earning and keeping the attention of an audience. Um, newsletters will also continue to grow organically in this environment based on the power of creator networks. Uh, despite the near annual pronouncements of the imminent death of uh, email, <laughs> it continues to be a strong channel for building contacts and connection. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, fighting for attention with social media algorithms um, that is not your friend can be tough, right? But in, in using other social platforms to grow your list, uh, where where you um, you know with people who care uh, is smart, you know, and that one to one trust uh, will be super valuable in twenty twenty four. So be sure not to squander uh, the privilege of showing up in that email box. Second big trend is the changing nature of social media. Uh, in 2023, we started to see some major shifts in social, um, you know, it, for its use and its purpose. Um, in addition to some new players like Threads coming along, uh, we witnessed the beginning of the end of Twitter, or at least as, as we knew it. <laughs> um, but there's an even bigger shift happening, which will dominate in 2024. Um, social media is becoming less social, and a lot of interactions are shifting to private closed networks. Um, to be fair, this trend started in 2023, but it continues to gain momentum and will become mainstream in 2024. Um, the rise of video prompted by growth platforms such as TikTok and YouTube uh, is allowing social media to increasingly dom dominate as a broadcast entertainment network. And in many ways, social media heavily weighted with video and discovery-based algorithm has become more like streaming and TV. <clears throat> um, as I said, this, this whole thing around social interaction is still there on social, for sure, but is shifting to more um, away from more traditional platforms. Um, yeah, Facebook groups are likely to be the most common application for conversations going private uh, for a travel advisor, uh, but there are a few other direct messaging platforms, not to mention um, and maybe that you may not be uh, familiar with uh, in previous con previous conversations. So let's let's jump into what those are. Um, in case you're not familiar with these icons, I'm going to kind of read them left to right, top to bottom. So we've got Telegram in the top left, Discord, and WhatsApp. And we've got Slack, Messenger, and Snapchat. Um, these are private one-to-one -one or small group messaging platforms. Um, WhatsApp, in addition to being a messaging platform, is also essentially a global telecom provider, um, which you know some clients uh, that you work with uh, may use for local calls while abroad. Um, Messenger is also likely familiar just because it's kind of wrapped up in the whole kind of Facebook um, family. Um, Snapchat is used by younger audiences, um, as is Discord, you know, although um, of them, you know, of all of them, Discord is growing the most over the year in terms of, um, of users. And of course, we've got Slack, right, as a strong follower in the workspace, particularly tech. Um, but Facebook private groups are sort of dominating that one-to-one -one private messaging and small group discussion for a lot of private conversations. Um, you know, some people call these, uh, this, this movement to private uh, groups, digital campfires. I believe that term actually was originated from Mark Schaefer in, uh, in his recent book. We're still having great conversations around the digital campfire, uh, but they're increasingly in private, not uh, in the open anymore. Um, and this is going to have profound impacts on the relationship building with prospective customers. Um, it's also going to have profound impact on social listening, right? Since we, it will be increasingly difficult to kind of tap into sentiments um, of what customers are saying about a brand online, um, you know, if it's shared in a private uh, private group. And that's all the more reason to consider maybe hosting your own private Facebook group. Um, some examples I know that are out there in the travel industry, there's the uh, Club Med Fanatics group. And I know that uh, Susan Susan Green from Susan's Travel Services in Arizona has a number of very successful private Facebook groups. I think her Tahiti group is uh, is is quite huge. And 
beyond just direct messaging in small groups and private, there's that social media is, has become broadcast entertainment. Um, you know, the platforms we traditionally know as social media, like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or X, I guess we call it now, uh, TikTok, LinkedIn, are increasingly becoming more content consumption networks built for creators. Um, with an emphasis on content discovery in the video algorithm, um, you know, in video, in the algorithm, uh, the game is about keeping users entertained, right? TikTok, of course, is driving this along with Instagram Reels and YouTube, but the collapse of Twitter is also, uh, I would say, a factor. Um, so a few notes about some platforms that have changed. Um, in 2023, Twitter was rebranded as X, right? But more importantly, the algorithm has been changed to favor discovery content and is tightly curated following, uh, your, you know, your tightly curated following that you may have had before is, is largely meaningless, um, you know, other than vanity metrics. Um, right now, I find the platform a little bit caustic uh, and and divided. Um, journalists, you know, um, are still there, um, you know, but they're using it less. And so, um, you know, I think for many businesses, this may become sort of a distant platform. Which I think we're still kind of hanging around, waiting to see uh, what Elon Musk does with it. Um, TikTok, on the other hand, has grown tremendously. Uh, its growth is frankly what is provoking um, the content algorithm um, changes on platforms in 2024. Um, this idea of social media becoming more like broadcast entertainment falls on the shoulder, I would say, of TikTok's growth. Um, we're still sharing and commenting on stuff in our feed, obviously, but much less so than, say, a year ago. Um, and this trend is particularly acute with millennials and especially Gen Z. Um, you know, social interaction has gone almost exclusively to private channels and DM with Gen Z. Um, if you've got teens or kids, right, in their 20s, um, they may occasionally toss you an update on Instagram. <laughs> but you know, the real stuff is likely being shared in private groups and direct messaging. So why is this stuff happening? Um, let's just, just call a spade a spade. It's TikTok. Um, and driving this, um, you know, this movement to other on other platforms to try and compete. Um, you know, social media as an entertainment vehicle is increasingly competing with streaming and TV, right? Uh, Discovery-based algorithms expose users to content from creators and people that they may not know. Um, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube have all made changes to elevate uh, vertical video. Um, so, you know, if you think about it, the resulting shift towards direct messaging makes sense. You know, if the feed feels less about connecting you to people that you know, and more about entertainment and exposure to new content through video, conversations with close friends are quite likely to go elsewhere. And this shift towards discovery video for entertainment and social media is happening for another reason. Um, uh, it, it's become a sort of a form of competition to streaming networks like Netflix. You know, in fact, uh, 2024 may even see TikTok with all its content created for free becoming a formidable contender to streaming platforms like Netflix, Hulu, and Disney, where content production is actually a cost center. Or we might even see TikTok make a, you know, a lateral competitive move into music streaming and, uh, you know, shake up Spotify or Amazon Music. Right. They were, you know, founded around bite dance and musically before becoming TikTok after all. So um, you know, that's uh we're starting to see a lot of shifts in this competition. So what does it mean for you? Um, these changes are going to require a fundamental shift of strategy around social media. In 2024, it's going to be less about having a social network to build community and service customers but rather um, a content consumption network where you can get distribution and attract people. Um, social media is increasingly becoming, you know, just media, right? Uh, YouTube and TikTok are leading this and the rest are following. A good strategy is to utilize the feed for exposure and distribution of information, but have a strategy to convert followers and true fans into direct contacts or members of your community. And that's once there, then you can interact in those private groups and connect through your own media like newsletters. For travel agents, you might think about embedding a newsletter, sign up uh, with your blog posts, you know, or having an email uh, at data capture on landing pages, you know, or sign up pages for Facebook private groups. And of course, you know, using social media, um, you know, perhaps even through an influencer to drive links to a landing page to data capture emails. 
becoming part of a hidden community also holds promise, um, but you need to earn the right to be there and invite it in. Um, you can't just wash up on the island and start, you know, shouting and selling all of your stuff. Of course, you know, the ultimate goal might be to create your own community. Um, there's also opportunity for co-creation with uh, consumers and collaborating in these private community spaces to further deepen the connection and bond. What, what might that look like for a travel agent, let's say? You know, perhaps co-hosting a group fam trip with a member or hosting a face-to-face -face meetup with an online group to share travel inspiration and stories uh, with a presentation of what you offer. And I've just noted there, um, you know, Facebook groups or, you know, Dis Discord is another one. The third big trend, local journalism making a comeback and a resurgence of print. Um, local news and accurate, truthful content will be in demand in 2024. And this is all in light of AI capabilities and the potential for foreign influence bias on the social media platforms. You know, should it concern us that 32% of Gen Z get their news from Chinese-owned TikTok? Yeah, I suspect yes. Um, the influence is less apt to be ov um, overly corrupt, though. I think it's more likely to be show up as sort of a gentle hand, right, on the algorithm scale and kind of giving more prominence to one view over another. Um, being a bit of a news junkie myself, both digital and hard copy, perhaps this is more hope than promise, but I think 2024 is when local journalism will figure out a business model that works to support it. You know, depending on where you live um, and you know where you're based, you could definitely leverage this, especially if you're in a smaller community. So why is this happening? Um, after being almost wiped out at the local level, you know, with the loss of ad revenues to social media, I believe people will again realize the, the value of investigated journalism for democracy uh, and truth in, in the face of easily generated fake news content. You know, the U.S. presidential election, whether you live in the country or whether you're just observing from afar, has global ramifications. And there's potential for foreign influence via social media. Uh, it will also contribute to this growing interest in supporting local journalism. So what does it mean for you? You know, ads and paid subscriptions are a traditional model for supporting local news, but is there an opportunity for brands to support small local newspapers and publications, you know, digital and print through sponsorship, sponsorship, or, you know, enabling good journalism through a benefactor or foundation model, perhaps? You know, a foundation model would see uh, people who care about the news and democracy build a foundation that could support the news. You know, because ads in local newspapers have less company, um, they'll be more they'll now more easily stand out. It's another angle. Um, and, and an act of placing a display ad will, could be viewed not only as a way to generate business, but as a signal to the readers and the community that you support journalism as a local business. Depending on the target audience, you know, that could be a value and really resonate. Um, you know, supporting a local travel section in your newspaper. Right now, however, this happens uh, could be a combination of that and something we call native advertising, where you know you're you're writing some content, but you're paying for the content to be there, but you're actually also contributing to supporting the local news. I think there might be room for some creative models here. So hopefully, um, you know, this isn't just wishful thinking on my part, but I I'm, I do believe that uh, local journalism is uh, is going to make a comeback. Also, a resurgence of print. Um, kind of running on that retro theme um, is is uh, my prediction around this. You know, hopefully I won't live to regret it, but I do think that 2024 will see opportunity for those who apply ink on paper. Um, you know, a quick glance at Canva templates for the, you know, say for the travel industry shows tons of cool looking designs, which can be customized. You know, the beauty of course, is that being able to print in limited quantities, right, with digital printing, um, you know, customizing a paper flyer for a community group or a Book club meeting could be a wonderfully low-tech, uh, personalized way to stand out in a digital charged year of 2024. So I do really think there's an opportunity here for kind of combining this, what we see as kind of old media, new media, uh, and, and putting them into your toolkit. Um, you know, this, you know, we can look at, you know, the reason why it's happening. You know, I think Print requires upfront costs to design, number one, uh, print and then distribute a physical piece. And that's going to limit its use to legitimate players. And remember what we talked about trust, right? Trust and legitimacy. 
Um, you know, and I do think that ink on paper will come to define trust. So what does it mean for you? Um, we've got postal service five days a week with 100% deliverability, right? You know, the box isn't as crowded as it used to be, and that might well be a way to stand out. Digital printing can be done in small quantities, you know, to keep costs down, um, plus it can be customized, right? Uh, the media source is going to matter. Uh, that was our trend number one, right? And print is a major way to validate the source and gain trust. In an age, in an age where AI uh, is in, can enable easily generated content and the potential for unchecked news content, print will be a way to validate authenticity of the source, right? As as well as stand out and grab attention in a busy digital landscape. So look for also kind of uh, craving around that printed word, right? In in news and publications. Print also allows consumers to have a, an experience with the brand, you know, then ask questions. You know, I see potential here for catalogs, you know, recurring print publications, you know, quarterly uh, customer magazines, you know, sent to loyal customers. And certainly as a B2B um, application, you know, printed piece uh, could be an exclusive distribution through salespeople um, as a conversation starter or something at a conference. I do think that lots of uh, marketing um marketing uh, directors have sort of forgotten, you know, that uh, you can actually market through print. And so maybe it's time to zig when everybody else is zagging uh, and taking a look at this uh, and to complement your digital efforts. Okay, back to trend number four. AI earns its place. Um, AI dominated the marketing and media conversation in 2023, and it will continue to do so in 2024 but for different reasons. Uh, this coming year, we'll focus less uh, exclusively on AI as a content generator, um, which kind of dominated, you know, things and, and the tool chat GPT is really what kind of rose it to uh, you know, the conversation level. In 2024, AI will go mainstream um, for behind the scenes work primarily. And it will be seamlessly integrated into almost every tool that we use. Word, PowerPoint, Excel, you know, all of our social platforms. Um, you know, AI will earn its keep in areas like customer enablement, you know, generating customer manuals, you know, kind of how-to tutorials and enabling access to information. Um, AI will also figure prominently in converse, um, you know, conversational advertising, uh, using it as a paid media to kind of create conversations in real time with customers. We'll see interactive bots, right, distributed by paid media used uh, for interaction with sales. We're likely to see AI used for the localization of copy, you know, language translation, uh, and the creation of buyer personas. All of this in addition to kind of creating endless uh, customizing options for individual customers. Uh, niche LLMs, which is kind of large language models. Um, which AI uses will become more common as their use for um, you know for pattern creation uh, based on derivative content will offer incredibly efficient consumer targeting and uh, need recognition. LLMs hold huge promise for the travel industry as uh, tools to help with travel planning, itinerary scheduling, and becoming uh, are becoming more common. Uh, beware though, um, as they will also put the the do it yourself ability for what agents do in the hands of consumers. I also expect that Google will emerge as a dominant AI player in 2024. You know, while OpenAI and ChatGPT got most of the headlines in 2023, Google um, may well be the empire strikes back in 2024. Um, you know, AI is based on a large language model and um, the data that it's drawn from and the data contained within Google search, YouTube, Gmail, you know, is both wide and deep. Um, Google was leading the research and development of AI already before the upstart OpenAI uh, sort of jumped the gun with the launch of ChatGPT. So they're not about to stand back and squander their previous leadership. So why is this happening? You know, technology is always going to advance. And right now, AI is in a competitive arms race uh, like we've never seen before. So what does it mean for you? Um, it's hard to predict where this will all end up other than to know there will be AI-assisted uh, inventions and applications that we can't yet conceive. Uh, imagine predicting the creation of apps and what they would enable when we were still using Nokia talk text phones. Right? That's where we're at with AI. 
we simply haven't begun to imagine all the possible applications. Most host agencies, um, you know, will, will be pursuing AI tools for their, you know, their agents. Um, so as, as this field heats up, you know, being able to avail yourself of a large agency network, LLM, might also be advantageous. Kind of right now we're at that infancy stage, right? Applying this new technology to old tasks like writing. Um, it's kind of like when we used to see banner ads on websites as the only ad application possible because it was like a display ad in an ad, uh, you know, ad in a newspaper. And we were applying it to a, a new technology, um, you know, with kind of our old thinking. Um, the age of the flip phone was before we invented social media. Uh, and the idea of targeting individual feeds with content based on tracking interests wasn't even imagined. We're still at this kind of new technology, old model stage with AI right now. But in 2024, that's going to change. Uh, the best strategy to use around AI, um, I would say, is to have an attitude of curiosity. Experiment with the new tools and applications you know, to help get gain knowledge. Um, you know, try it for various marketing tasks as new tools become available. The last and final big trend is the paradigm shift in search. Um, AI is going to introduce dramatic changes to search and SEO in 2024. Uh, Google's always dominated search um, and with it a successful paid AdWords model of revenue. Um, but with the introduction of chat GPT and LLM models in general, the way people search for information is changing. SEO was impacted with voice search and only being able to deliver one answer, presumably the best answer. You know, but AI used in search capacity will change the game completely again. Uh, rather than delivering pages of ranked content as possible best matches, the goal of AI is, like voice search, to deliver one succinct best answer gathered from those top sources without necessarily listing them. Um, the degree to which credit or links to original sources is provided is still being negotiated. You know, many Gen Zs I know go distinctively to ChatGPT now for things most of us are accustomed to using Google search for. Um, this is all putting massive pressure on Google to respond in, to shifting competitive landscape and changes in consumer behavior. Another curious thing I've noticed with Gen Z in doing research is they're, you know, they search, um, they're searching right now using social media, in particular TikTok um, and a little bit of Instagram. Uh, they'll go on there, you know, for a how-to video on doing something rather than going to chat GPT or Google search. So the really only thing that we know from all of this is we can start to see a fragmentation of search and that's going to have, have implications if you're relying on it to surface your business uh, high in the search results. So why is this happening? You know, ChatGPT delivers a single response generated from scanning relevant content to create custom curated answer. Um, and that's quite different from Google's current model of delivering pages with links ranked by relevancy. Uh, and of course, they've infiltrated uh, those with paid uh, search AdWords at the top of page one. So those paid search ads are a major source of revenue stream for Google, which is another reason why they'll be responding. So what does it mean for you? Um, you know, Google's not about to let chat GPT walk away with their search business, um, but to respond will mean significantly changing the current way that search generates answers. And likewise, the way that businesses uh, have become accustomed to appearing in search. And it's likely to be more of, you know, uh, a revolution uh, than an evolution. Um, anyone who has had to make adjustments following Google's most recent helpful content update will attest to the algorithm being in flux, um, but that's nothing compared to the potential coming changes that could impact search. If your business relies um, on search and ranking uh, well for certain key phrases to drive traffic to your site, this is a trend that you need to keep on top of. Uh, but despite ChatGPT having made significant roads in 2023, I would never bet against Google. Um, you know, see my prediction number four. You know, just know that you may need to make adjustments in your approach to SEO in 2024, and that could involve, um, you know, uh, you know some paid uh, some paid things, who knows. Um, since the current offering for, for chat GPT threatens their ad revenue model and um, paid ad keyword search, I expect that they will need to address this in their AI response. You know, whatever that looks like, 
um, you may need to allot some funds uh, to remain competitive in search as the AI paradigm uh, shift takes place. So that wraps up our 2024 trends update. Um, you know, I invite you to sign up for my five minute marketing tips newsletter delivered uh, fresh to you weekly uh, every Sunday morning. And um, just because I've got a bit of a travel theme going on here, if you'd like to access some travel content, you know, sharing with your audiences, uh, feel free to check out carryonqueen.com. Thanks again for being here. Hope you found these interesting and relevant for your business. And um, if you haven't already subscribed, be sure to do so to my YouTube channel and uh, check out the other videos. Take care. We'll see you next time.